Hey guys, it's Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be talking about the differences between selling coins in person versus selling them online. Why is it important to develop your eye as a numismatist and a coin dealer? We're going to get to all that important topics in this video. We hope you guys enjoy. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about selling at coin shows, and we're going to talk about selling online, and how those things differ, and why it's important that you realize those things. So when I go to a show, and I'm trying to sell coins to certain people, you have to kind of read the room and understand maybe where you're at. So at the Tyler Coin Show, we sold four coins the whole show, and that's okay because we bought almost 60 coins because we know how to sell online. You may be at a show where people like to buy raw coins for their set, or they like to buy um, certain graded coins that you might not have, right? And so when you're seeing maybe 500, 750, 1,000 people walk through the door, they're looking for particular things, and they have to look through the whole room. It's their responsibility to find the coin that they want for the right price, the right eye appeal, and something that stands out to them in their collection. And so say I'm offering a 1916D at a show, a Mercury Diamond AG3, and say out of the 500 people, there's only two people in the whole show that are looking for a 16D. It's just a hypothetical. Say they look through the whole show and they don't come to my table or they pass over the case too quickly and the sale never happens. I still have the coin in my inventory and that's unfortunate. But as time progresses, if you become experienced as a dealer, they're going to recognize you, they're going to come to you first, they're going to give you calls. So it's definitely a different way of setting up and becoming uh, a notable dealer at shows because after a while, a lot more business will come to you because they know that you'll always be there. So it becomes a little bit more of a tougher for the newer guys because they need to have that time investment of coming to shows, being set up, and providing great material for a lot of collectors. There's something different about being online because you are going to market your coins a different way. And you're going to market your coins the right way. And you're going to be able to reach the audience that is looking for a certain coin. And what does that mean, right? So if I am trying to sell an 1880s Morgan dollar, the person that's buying the coin is going to type in 1880s Morgan dollar graded mint state 63 by PCGS. And they're going to look through all the listings and they're going to try to find the one that fits their collection the best. And so your job as a seller online is you're supposed to find a coin that's unique, has good eye appeal, and is priced right. And I'm going to use the ADS Morgan right now to show you guys. So we bought this coin this weekend. It's an 1880s Morgan. It's got nice eye appeal. Something unique about it is that it's in a rattler holder. And it was priced right. It sold right away. And so when you're a seller online, you need to take everything that you buy seriously. And also, you have to market it in, a, in the right way. If someone's looking for an 1880s Morgan and there's thousands of listings... Make sure the coin is photographed right, make sure the coin's priced right, and make sure that it's interesting. And so there's two different things that are going on, and it's kind of just the way that you approach it, and you have to reverse engineer it so you can make sure that you're successful not only selling online, but also selling in person. And so we didn't really know that. We didn't really think about it that, that way until the end of the Tyler show. We say, hey, sometimes we got to read the room, understand what works, what doesn't work, how we need to do better, and how do we need to perfect online as well. And so what has worked for us so far and how we sell a lot of coins online is we follow those things. And when we follow those things, people end up liking the coins a lot. They end up leaving good reviews. I think we have over 600 reviews on eBay, and then we have, I think, 500 customers on our website that we can email right now and show them everything that we have for sale. And so if you guys want to see exactly what we're talking about, the coin's photographed right, the coin's priced right. Make sure to check out our website, acousticcollectibles.com. We try to post things there every single week. It's a plug, shameless plug, but it is to drive home a point that we've been trying to perfect what we do online, and then we're going to move that more into shows as well. But we have to look at both sides and what is needed to kind of feed the beast. And so we hope you guys enjoyed those little tidbits of what we learned about selling in person and selling online. Let's show you guys our new purchases. We hope you guys enjoy them. All right, guys. So we have three trays laid out for you guys today. I wanted to show you just a tidbit of everything that we got at the Beaumont show this weekend. Talk to you a little bit more about eye appeal. But let's move on to the first tray. So 
So this is a 1940 Walking Liberty Half. It's graded Proof 63 by NGC. It's got a little haste to the coin, but that's okay. There's a few hairlines out in the fields. And the right side, you can kind of see those light little scratches there. And that's just something that's more common, especially with the lower grade proofs. But definitely a nice looking coin. And we have two SOQs I want to show you today. This is a 1923. It's graded Mint State 62. Nice look to the coin overall. I don't think there's anything that's too distracting about the coin. And also is super affordable. You don't have to pay those Mint State 64 prices, which is, I think, double this. And we have this 1920 SOQ. Similar in terms of price and grade and eye appeal. It's uh, just a little bit of an earlier SLQ, and I thought it would be worth our while to try it out. Then we have a Volt Box 1903 Barber Dime. It's graded Mint State 61. So 1903 O's, I haven't really ran into them too often. And when this one was in a Volt Box, I thought I wanted to jump on it because the Volt Box craze is going on still. And uh, yeah, definitely just a tougher type coin to run into. And so... It all it kind of matched everything that we wanted. Here's the 16D dime we were talking about earlier. It is a key day. We ran a guy at the show today that we bought coins from at Houston, and he said, hey, I got some other coins I want to show you, and he pulled out this coin. Definitely a coin that doesn't have a lot of margin in it in terms of if you want to buy and resell it, but it's something that is made available for your customers, so when they go to your website or they search 1916D Mercury Dimes, this one pops up, it's available, and it's priced right. Let's move over this tray real quick and show you guys these coins. So these are all rattler holders. A lot of these are more common date, but there's a lot of desire for these right now. We have all Mint State 65 walkers in the 40s. They all kind of match in terms of eye appeal. Bill Mason, shout out to him because he's one of our customers, and he ended up sending us a nice group of these coins to price and buy. I'm going to show you guys the cool coin that he sent us in just a moment, but these are pretty neat also. This is a 1908 $5 Indian. It's graded Mint State 60. It's gold CAC approved, and it's pretty nice. And so we wanted to show you guys this coin because it did stand out to us, and uh, it just has all the bells and whistles that a collector would like, if they like the old holder, if they like the CAC sticker, and the nice piece of numismatics in there as well. We have a few other Morgan dollars I wanted to show you. All really nice and PQ. Super flashy. Gorgeous luster. It's something that's typical with S-Mints. But the New Orleans Mint coin doesn't look too bad either. Uninterrupted luster. Just super flashy. I do like this coin also. And the ADS that we wanted to show you guys earlier. All with nice eye appeal. That was priced right. And all three of these Morgans did sell on our website before we can even post this video. So make sure you guys check out our website daily. Let's show you guys this last tray real quick because it has some cool stuff on it also. So we bought some nice type coins at the top and then we bought some old holders down here. The first one I want to show you is this Redfield holder. So it basically came out of a hoard and uh, people really do like these types of coins. And so I bought this one from our buddy at the show and I think it was... It was pretty nice. It was priced afford uh, affordable and, uh, yeah, pretty decent. Then we have this 24S SOQ. A little bit of a better date. It has some towing to it. Still some remaining luster to the coin as well. That's, that's kind of what you need for an AU50. But, yeah, a lot of nice underlying luster on the reverse. We have three cap bust halves today. These are both kind of lower grade but nice looking. If you can buy kind of graded... You know, cap bus taps around $100, sell them for $110. Um, you know, make 10 bucks. That's something that we try to do. Um, we try to buy nice coins that are high value, nice coins that are lower value because we have customers on every price range, and that is what you're here for. You're here to work with collectors. So this is 18, 14 over 3. You can faintly see the 3 there. Uh, this one is CAC approved, so it's tough to get coins. You know, cap bus taps, CAC approved. Because a lot of them are just not original. This one is, and it's a neat little overdate. So we got this 1926 two and a half Indian in an OGH holder. Ended up buying this with a 16D dime. Nice looking coin. A lot of the Indians were undergraded when they graded them back in, you know, the early PCGS days. And so this coin could be a little bit higher in grade today, but 
We're just going to sell it as is. There's not a huge spread between 61, 62, and 63. And I wanted to try this little modern piece out. It's a World War II, I think, commemorative four-year. Um, just, I don't really know a whole lot of backstory about the coin, but wanted to show you guys anyway. And I don't see a lot of these more modern coins in OGHs because people didn't really care about these coins, especially when they were holdering, uh, you know, holdering coins with the OGH holders. So... Thank you guys for taking a look at all these coins today. We hope you guys learned a lot. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the coins that we wanted to share with you today. Do you like them? Do you like what we had to say? All that's very important to us. Make sure to subscribe. We're coming out with videos every single week, and we want you guys to be a part. If you guys are going to the Broken Arrow Coin Show, we will be set up there. Chris Harrell puts on a great show every year, and we're excited to come back. Just a phenomenal show. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.